Hi, sixth grade. Me again. Nice to see you. I hope that you are having a good day so far and that you're ready for some new vocab. Um, I bet you guys did really well on your unit nine exam. It's start time for us to start our unit 10 study. And we're going to do the same format that we would do if we were up in the schoolhouse. I'm going to give you two weeks to learn a unit. We're going to do the activities in the book and we're going to use Quizlet. So what I want you to do today is I want you to watch this video and take notes along with me in your workbook. And then I want you to go on to Quizlet and I want you to do learn for a little while to practice saying them and using them. And then do something fun like match or um, gravity to help you learn those words. So first things first, meet me in your workbook on unit 10. That my friends is gonna be page 128. If you need to get your book, pause me. Go get your book and come back. It's like your dream. You can pause me and I can give you a little break. It'd be awesome. Um, we're going to go through word by word. I'm going to teach you how to say it, what it's part of speeches, and what it means. And then we're going to use these words in context throughout the week and next week. Um, I can't see you saying all the words after I say them, but I bet my smart little learners are going to repeat the words after me because you know that that makes it more solid in your brain and you'll know how to say it. Start with number one. Please say abominable. Abominable is an adjective. It means arousing hatred, um, disgusting or detestable. And you can think about the abominable snowman who was a mythical evil snowman creature who messed with people and help us to remember that. So please say abominable. Word number two, bumbling. This is a really fun word. Say it. Bumbling. Good, good. Um, it could mean an adjective, it could be a noun. The adjective, if you call somebody bumbling, it means that they're blundering and they're awkward, maybe like they're bumping into stuff and they're being sort of a mess in that way. And a noun, it is clumsiness. Um, I think we all know someone who is clumsy and tends to trip over people's feet in the classrooms and stuff. You could say that I'm like bumbling around in the classroom when I do that. Number three is consequence. You guys already know this word. Consequence is a noun. It's an effect of an action, right? There are positive consequences and there are negative consequences, but they are results of things that we do. So a positive consequence of watching this video is that you'll have access to more challenging vocabulary word. A consequence if you don't watch the video is that you won't quite be as ready for seventh grade as you could be. We are really familiar with that word. Number four, please say delude. Delude. Good, thank you, thank you Joaquin for pronouncing that word, nice job. Um, when you delude somebody, it's a verb and it means that you fool them or you trick them. We're getting close to April Fool's Day, um, so think about it in that way. Also, if you've ever heard of the word delusion, when a person is like believing something that isn't true, these two words are related. So delude means to fool, to deceive. Synonym, hoodwink. That's a very fun word, it's in your book. Number five, please say dole. So dole can be a verb or it can be a noun. The verb to dole means to hand out, to give out. Um, Miss LaRue is on Clearfield Street right now doling out work and meals for those who need it. Now the noun, the dole, is means money, food, or other necessities given as charity. So that would be like, I went and got the dole for Miss LaRue today. It's tricky to know that one, but I want you to really practice it, knowing that if it's a verb or knowing if it's a noun. Number six, engulf. Um, to engulf something is a verb and it means to swallow up, to overwhelm or to consume, right? So right now um, you might say maybe the small tree was engulfed by the winds passing by. We have the truck was engulfed by flames. Um, so engulf means to swallow up or to overwhelm or to consume. Uh, we could say like hospitals are engulfed with numbers of people coming in to overwhelm. Number seven, foil. I love this word. I am not talking about tin foil. That's one of the options um, or like your aluminum foil, but this is something different. Um, the verb to foil means to defeat or to win. Uh, the noun is a thin sheet of metal. Um, it could also be a light fencing sword 
or a person or thing serving as a contrast to the other. So opposites, your foil is your opposite. So Miss LaRue is my foil. I do reading and writing. She does mathematics. We are each other's foil. I hope you guys use that word often. It's a pretty cool one. People will think you're smart. You are smart. Number eight, you guys know this one already, easy. Please say formulate. Now in that word, you see the word formula, right? It's a verb to formulate, and it means to express systematically, to devise, to invent. Formulate means to make, to make a plan, to make a hypothesis, um, to make a, an experiment. You would be formulating it. Number nine, initiative. This was a word of the week from Miss Padilla earlier this year, and I really, really liked it. It's in our book as well. Initiative is a noun, and it's the first step or the first move. So you most often will hear people talking about taking initiative. Take the initiative and make your bed before your mom tells you to. Um, take the initiative and brush your teeth before somebody tells you that your breath is stinky, right? Taking the initiative is taking the first step, acting without being directed. Truly responsible people take initiative, okay? Number 10, memento. Please say memento. It is the not, not the same thing as like mentos, those little mint gum things. Um, it's a noun and a memento is something that serves as a reminder. Um, a synonym I would suggest that you write down in your book is that a memento is a souvenir. Okay, so I might say a memento from Pi Day is these are these super cool t-shirts that Miss LaRue had made. I love mine. I'm repping it today to celebrate all you guys who got your Pi numbers. But a memento is a remembering item, right? You can even see the word remember in that. Number 11, please say non-conformist. The three-parter right there, we got the non, the conform, and the ist. And when we break those down using our roots, we're able to determine what this word means even if we don't have a dictionary. A nonconformist is a noun, and it's a person who refuses to follow the established ideas or ways of doing things. So if everybody um, buckles their seatbelt in the car, someone might be like, I'm a nonconformist. I don't buckle my seatbelt. I go against what everyone else does. In that example, a nonconformist would be wrong. But there's many times that nonconformists are a good thing because that means that you're unique and you're trying something different. The adjective is relating to something that's unconventional, something that's a little bit different. Number 12. I hope you're ready. This is super weird. Number 12 is our first time that our vocab word is actually sort of more of a figure of speech or a statement. So it's null and void, three separate words. When they're used together, they mean no longer in effect, right? So um, I might say to you, um, our schedule of going to school for the rest of this week is null and void. It is no longer correct, no longer accurate. Um, so it's tricky. It's three words. It is an adjective and null and void describes something that's no longer accurate. Number 13, you guys know this word panorama. Um, you guys know this from your phones when you take a panoramic picture. That's the kind where they have you sort of move your phone around so you can get the larger gap and you can see the entire area around you. So a panorama is a wide, unobstructed view of an area, and that is a noun. That's a thing, okay? The view is a thing. Next page, here we go, page 130. Posterity, please say posterity. I really want you to say it. Posterity, okay. I believe you. London, I believe you said it. I believe you. Um, posterity is a noun. It's a thing. All of a person's offspring or descendants in a future generation. So um, let's keep the photo album for posterity. To remember our ancestors to remember where we came from. Number 15, pry. This is a verb and it's to loosen by force. I imagine maybe I want to take my phone out of my phone case and I pry it out. I rip it out, peel it out. Um, it also could mean to look carefully into something. So maybe I think that you're keeping a secret from me and I might try to pry that secret out from you and say, you know, you really can trust me. I'm here to help you. And I'd be prying that loose, okay? Um, prying can be good. Prying can be bad. Depends on how you are doing it. Number 16, please say refurbish. Refurbish. Um, to refurbish is a verb. It means to brighten, freshen, or polish, to restore to new. 
So maybe this week while you're at home, you've decided you want to refurbish an old chair that's in your house. You might take that chair, clean it, put a new seat on it, and make it new again. I'm going to refurbish Riley's jump shot. This is sixth grade. Wow. Well, I'll refurbish y Yamir's jump shot. Yo. So refurbish means to make something new again. You guys might know this word also from buying technology. You can order a refurbished iPhone and have it for a smaller price. It means it's been sent back to a factory, cleaned up and made new, and then reused. Refurbishing things is very good for our environment. So, Haley, that's for you. Number 17, resourceful. Please say resourceful. Resourceful. Thank you, Mr. Todd. He said it. Um, resourceful is an adjective. Um, when a person is re resourceful, it means they're able to deal promptly and effectively with all sorts of problems. For example, right now, I could say you guys are being super resourceful. You are using the internet and you're using videos to make it so that you can learn and so that you can go to the next grade, even though there's all this stuff that's going on. You are resourceful. I'm resourceful too. Uh, resourceful also means clever. Clever. Number 18, I already used this word today before I even saw it in the book. The word for number 18 is rigorous. Please say rigorous. Rigorous is an adjective and it means that something is severe, harsh, strict. It also could mean that something is challenging. So what I told Mr. McDonough this morning is that I want to make some rigorous activities for you guys so that you're challenged and you're using your brains at home, stretching your brain to the best of its ability. 19, this word is weird. Look at it. Okay, it's pronounced subsequent. Can you guys please say subsequent? It looks weird, that's why we have to practice it. So if something is subsequent, it means it's coming after or in line, right? So I might say we study our, u our unit words for two weeks and then subsequently we have an exam. The next thing we have is an exam, okay? Um, and our last word is unerring. Please say unerring. Um, if something is unerring, that's an adjective, and it means it's making no mistakes, um, it is faultless, okay? Break this word down for me. Un means not, err, like error, right? So not making errors, unerring. Log on to Quizlet, practice these words. Tomorrow you are going to be doing this page right here, and um, communicate with each other, communicate with me, send me a Jupyter message, an email, or a message on the Google Classroom. I just want you guys to be happy and know that you're safe and that I love you and I'll see you soon. All right. Bye.